What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering with some breaking news from Game Informer magazine, which not that long ago, I reported that the print version of it had been terminated, and now we see more employees blindsided by a huge round of layoffs. And I want to remind everyone, as a small test for this week, I'm asking everyone just to remember to like, and if you can, leave a comment and maybe consider uh, putting the videos out on Twitter, Facebook, Minds, whatever you use. I think my channel is currently getting sandboxed. I want to see if together we can get it out of that and see if my video starts showing up for people again. But uh, And I really would appreciate it. I know I always ask, but um, it's really appreciated, and I'm curious to see if this helps anything. Now, Game Informer Magazine has long produced articles that I would have definitely roasted. Video articles like video games should embrace politics and all sorts of other insane things, but that's neither here nor there. You read this article, a common sentiment seen through the gaming community is that politics are unwanted in games. This view is held so strongly by some it is embodied, embodied by radical movements like game or game. Their argument is that the real world is a share of grievances and antagonism over politics, so why should our entertainment? a prime tool for escapism, also feature these views. The answer is simple. Politics don't only matter, but they also make for better games and better stories. Now, I disagree with you, but now as several Game Informer former employees in this story, I, I should remind you, is developing. Uh, several Game Informer people have now started tweeting about being let go from the company. Uh, if you remember, David Milner uh, is talking about Game Informer Australia being shuttered. I have some news. Today is my last day as editor of Game Informer Australia. This was not my decision. The owner of the magazine, EB Games, is making cuts because global parent company GameStop recently failed to find a buyer after months on the market. Their share prices have suffered. This is a result. For the record, Game Informer Australia still sold well. Readership was up 19% over the last year. Recent ad sales, however, did not really reflect this. Well, here's the thing. Uh, it is my opinion, my theory, that the reason that so many of these legacy video game media websites, sites like even like Kotaku, Polygon, uh, we've seen uh, Waypoint, the Vice video game media out outlet, Shutter recently. The reason so many of these game journalists seem so antagonistic towards the YouTube community is because we're taking all of their advertisers because, well, we have all the credibility. The American version of the magazine will still be sold here instead. It is a great magazine filled with the work of fantastic quote-unquote journalists, and I urge people to continue supporting it. The decision has nothing to do with the U.S. Game Informer team, blah, 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 blah. Now, as of today, Game Informer lay off many staff. Now former employees break the news about the cuts GameStop-owned magazine. Game Informer has undergone a round of layoffs, according to a handful of now former employees, West Coast News Editor Imran Khan, Senior Associate Editor Kyle Hillard, and Associate Editor Cyril Vasquez all posted on Twitter that they have been let go. Another laid off employee posted on private social media accounts saying they had lost their job along with, quote, many others. As of writing this, Game Informer and parent company GameStop have not responded to requests for comment about the number of employees let go. The website staff lists 19 people but has not been updated to reflect all of today's lawsuits, uh, law, layoffs. By the way, if you were a former Game Informer journalist and your Twitter isn't full of Orange Man Bad, I would be happy to employ you with ExclusivelyGames.com. Feel free to write. Writers at ExclusivelyGames.com, I'd be happy to have you. While GameStop has struggled in recent years, Game Informers continue to be a mainstay in the gaming press. As of 2018, it boasted a circulation of 6.6 .6 million paid subscribers, including 2.1 million paid digital subscribers. This is a huge amount of money. Uh, could, I, could I imagine having a million paid subscribers? That's, that's insanity. Enough to build itself as the fifth largest consumer publication in the United States. However, this year has already seen GameStop trim the brand back as it shuttered Game Informer Australia in April. At the time of the shutdown, Game Informer Australia editor David Milner said readership for the magazine was up 19% year over year, even if had ad sales had not kept pace. Now, the ad sales is obviously the only thing that's important. And if you don't have advertisers, well, you're not going to stay in business very long. And I think maybe it has something to do with the type of people that they employed. Uh, we're going to get into that in just a minute. 
Several employees at Game Informer have found themselves without work. On Twitter, Game Informer employees have begun tweeting about being laid off. Notably, staff members like these three all have remarked on the situation, with their tweets seeming to indicate that the decision came without prior warning. News of the surprise layoffs have been increasingly more commonplace, with each incident reinvigorating calls to unionize the industry. Update. It appears Jeff uh, Markia Fava and Javi Gualtni sorry, have also been laid off. According to Ben Shea, we lost some truly unbelievable writers and personalities today. So if there's 19 employees, uh, that's one, two, uh, Ellie, that's three, uh, Andy McNamara is four, managing editor Matt Burris is five. Um, this is a huge percentage. This is almost 50% of the staff. Um, if we add Imran, Sirel, and Kyle Hillard, this is a huge chunk. Um, so it appears Jeff and Javi have been laid off from Game Informer, according to Ben Shea. Uh, update 313, Ellie Favis have been, just been informed. He's been laid off. Editor-in-Chief Andy McNamara posted a cryptic tweet. Early estimate placed the uh, total layoff around half. 50% of their staff is gone. At uh, 8.20, managing editor Matt Burtz has confirmed that he's been laid off. And at 8.37, Andy McNamara confirms he will address the Game Informer layoffs. Quote, I appreciate all the love. I see it. I feel it. I'm trying to get things right with my people. I love Game Informer and its people and its readers more than any corporation could. And I will address all the issues when I can. But for now, I need to focus on my Game Informer family. Andy Rayner commented, what a horrible day. Part of my family is suddenly gone. Game Informer staff hit was layoffs. The decision to cut members appears to be GameStop one rather than one made internally at Game Informer, though this remains speculative until the official statement is made, given how many gamers have expressed their discontent over firing Imran, Surel, Kyle, Jeff, Javi, Alice, and Matt. It'd make more sense the decision was part of GameStop's continued efforts to keep their heads above water rather than Game Informer deciding to eliminate valued staff. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. Uh, you don't lay off often um, employees if you're making enough money or if you're making good money. That said, Game Informer did tweet out about unpaid editorial internships opportunities a few weeks ago, which isn't exactly a good look in the light of these layoffs. The fall of internship dates, uh, the fall internship, inter internship dates at Game Informer listed at September 11th through December 13th. Unpaid interns. PSA, today is the last day to apply for Game Informer's fall editorial entertainment ship. How do you all feel about aging hipsters with no agree, degree? Oh boy, what a thrilling opportunity to work 30 day, hours a week for no pay. So you're, in, you're replacing them with unpaid interns as it would look. Earlier this month, GameSoft laid off 50 of their field leaders, including regional district, HR, and LP, loss prevention that is. According to an article from Game Daily, despite these efforts to reduce costs, GameStop's share prices continue to drop. $3.38 as of August 20th, with many predicting the company could go under or be bought out sooner rather than later. In that instance, it's unclear what would happen to Game Informer as they are a subsidiary of GameStop. Now, here's the here's the um, thing I'm going to watch. Generally, when a company is aggressively cutting costs like this, they're probably trying to prepare themselves for sale. And this may be what GameStop is doing. Now, if I just, like, I didn't even cherry pick this. I picked up a couple people. Here's Matt Burtz. Today, GameStop informed me that I don't work at GameStop anymore. I was very proud to manage and work alongside the incredible team, editors, designers, writers, podcasters, programmers, videographers, and gamers. They always be family to me. Well, let's see if you qualify to work for exclusively games. Um, looks like I see you tweeting mostly about video games. This is a good sign. Matt Burtz, as far as I can see, would be a good candidate for exclusively games. How about Elsie? I was laid off today and today is my last day at Game Informer. Along with a handful of colleagues, I'm heartbroken. I loved work so much, but if you know anyone that's hiring, give me a heads up. Thanks to everyone who had read my words. Okay, well, exclusively games is interested. Let's see. Oops, retweeting Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. That's probably not a good sign. Cats on the tweet, that's okay. Hmm. Retweeting, despite all the progress that Riot has made since last year's expose, the arbitration policy, even after walking back, some of it really stinks. Walking out is the least appropriate. You're supporting that. 
I stand by my reporting on this. If you say that your game doesn't have microtransaction when it really does, that's misleading information. Um, well, okay, there's some possibility there. Um, let's see, Jeff uh, says, while I'm on effing vacation, meaning he got terminated while he's on vacation. Well, let's see if he's a good opportunity. Oh, his most recent tweet says, our president is a vile R and he's going to get my Congress. Oh, geez. Okay, well, I don't think you're going to make it since you have TDS, clearly. Um, Kyle Hillard, I was laid off from Game Informer this morning, which was surprising and heartbreaking. Writing for the magazine gave me some of the best experiences of my life. I absolutely adore everyone I worked with. Let's see. Um, you know, it seems like there might be some good opportunities here. I see their Twitter feeds are full with actual articles about video games. This is probably a good thing. Uh, video games and movies and not um, TDS. Well, with the exception of that one person. But certainly Game Informer has uh, made their kind of um, bed, so to speak. Here's Imran, former senior editor at Game Informer. He, him, pronouns in the bio, not a good sign. Um, talking about unionizing your workplace. I just booked a flight to PAX, partially out of spite, but also because I'm on a few panels and I want to back out. Um, you know, okay. Um, you know, it seems like they have a lot of blue check marks that work there. Uh, probably not going to have a problem finding work in today's modern day games industry, but laying off 50% of their staff is not a good sign. And just a further progression, I think, of how legacy games media is continuing to collapse in and of itself. And partially, I believe, is because many of the articles at places like Game Informer and Waypoint and all these other outlets that have closed in the past, they spent a lot of time uh, worrying about dividing their their viewers and instead of, uh, you know, working for the actual viewer, uh, audience. You know, you see this website full of actual good video game articles. Uh, it's, I guess it's kind of sad to see. Then again, it's just another legacy media outlet that was likely to uh, write another hit piece about YouTubers or myself in particular. Uh, so I guess I'm not going to miss you, Game Informer, but uh, yikes. More news in the GameStop saga, more news in the uh, Get Woke Go Broke video games media, and uh, a huge shout out to YouTube, which continues to eat a lot of these people's lunch. Hopefully some of them will be able to stand on their own. Uh, but we'll, I guess it remains to be seen. Clearly GameStop didn't think they were worth keeping around. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.